Welcome to another edition of AACC Starting Points, where we like to look into the early journeys of AAPC members and see how they got their first physicians as a medical coder. Today, I have with us Meg- Megan Chavis. Did I say your last name right, Megan? Chavis. Chavis. Megan Chavis, yeah. All right. Well, Megan, thanks for joining us today. First, just to start off your journey, how did you t- choose the path of becoming a medical coder? Tell us a little bit about what led you down this road. Um, well, prior to doing medical coding, I worked in a lot of the factories um, in my local town doing like the seasonal um, work. And then, you know, after seasonal work, they kind of lay you off. And so it wasn't really a steady income. And I have a five year old son. Well, he's five now, but um, at the time he was only like one years old. So I was trying to create a steady income so that, you know, I could send him to like private school and just have a better upbringing than I had. So I was trying to set that stage. And um, I remember my neighbor saying something about medical coding and, you know, he's old school. So he's seen it in the paper. (laughs) And um, so I got, I, he told me about that a while ago. And then when I was thinking about, well, where am I going to take my career now? Cause you know, I don't want to keep working in these factories because they're really not going anywhere. So I looked into medical coding and um, I actually went to career step and not through AAPC for my medical coding schooling. And I started that in February, 2019, and I finished it um, July, 2019. And then I sat for the CPC in August, 2019. Um, And then, you know, uh, so August, so two months later, I obtained my first job in medical coding doing diagnostic radiology. So it was October 2019 that I had my first coding job. Wow. And I've heard, I've watched these uh, webinars and I hear you say it's called um, cold calling, like when you don't really know anybody um, at the place. So yeah, so I didn't know any coders. I didn't know anybody at my local hospital. So I was just coming in from nowhere. (laughs) And um, so, you know, a lot of times, um, so right now I am a um, radiology coding educator on a national level. So I give education to coders, providers, practice directors, performance managers. So Anybody that wants to know anything about coding as it relates to diagnostic or interventional radiology, I give that education for them. So I'll create um, documents and I'll create, I'll take those documents and I'll turn them into PowerPoint slides and I'll present that to the providers so that they're aware of how the coding reimbursement and their services come into play so they can understand um, what's going on. And so I look to a lot of our primary sources, so like the American Medical Association, uh, the CPT book and the guidelines, So and then the ICD-10-CM, since I do outpatient or professional coding. Um, I don't really do like the facility coding, so that's more of the hospital reimbursement. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> hey, well, your career... In this, in the short four years, has evolved and taken yeah. taken a path that you may not have thought that it would, you know, because you you went into this to be a coder, but you're still mm-hmm. you still have your hands in that, but as an educator. Yeah, 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 and you know, um, I think it's really cool. You know, I wanted to share my story so that other coders. I know a lot of times, like when I was coming into coding, I was kind of really discouraged because you know. I didn't know anybody in coding and you hear all these stories of, oh, I got my CBCA and, you know, I can't get a job. Well, a lot of times, and this isn't all the time, but I see that your mindset plays a lot into getting into this career field because, or anything at all, really. So like, if you just tell yourself, you know, like, I'm going to go into this interview and I'm going to do the best that I can. And, you know, it might not turn out that you get the job, but at least you know that you put your best foot forward. And that's what I tell coders all the time because they say, oh, how did you get to where you are today? And, you know, and I work on it myself every day, like my mindset. So that's a, that's what I say would be 
the best thing is like your confidence and your mindset. And it's a continuous progress that you have to do in order to get to like a positive mindset every day. Because, you know, stressors in life come up and we just have to deal with those. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, um, let's, let's peel back the layers of you mm-hmm. cold calling and that <laughs> whole journey. So you receive your CPCA, you pass the exam. And did you just call cold call coders in your area based off from who you found on LinkedIn? Or did you just call coding departments directly? Tell us about that a little bit more. Um, well, I didn't actually make any phone calls, but okay. I did put my application in to all of the local hospitals. So I live in Springfield, South Carolina. So we're kind of in the middle of um Augusta, Georgia, and Columbia, South Carolina, that is like the major cities that's in my area. So I put in applications to like all of the hospitals and actually only one of them called me, which was in Augusta, Georgia. And so I went in, uh, we had to do the pre-test and I'll say that when I went in there to do that pre-test, I was like, I didn't even know what I was doing. (laughs) So I was like, they gave me like an hour and I think it was 15 questions. And so I'm using the coding books and, you know, I was familiar with using the coding book because, you know, I passed my certification, but they were giving me like real life examples and asking me like, where was, or what is place of service like 11? And I was like, where do you find that at? So when I left that, session I went online and I started researching like where is that and so it's actually the first page of CPT book that has your place of service codes on it (laughs) um so yes I took my pre-test I passed it and then they called me back for my interview and I was so nervous like I wasn't working at the time I was just a stay-at-home mom because um I got out of the factories it wasn't seasonal time during this time so I was just staying at home with my son And so when I went in and I had my interview, it was a panel of like five people and I had never been to like a panel interview before. So I was like super nervous when I went there. Um, But the week prior to my interview, I was like, you know, how can I make myself stand out? And my my current fiance, but he was my boyfriend at the time. He was like he thought I was crazy. So. I went online and I did a lot of research and I seen that, you know, IT people create these portfolios and I couldn't find a whole lot of information on like, what does a portfolio look like um, in the coding realm? So I kind of took what I learned from the IT perspective and I created my own like portfolio and I put it into a binder and then I showed up at the interview with my portfolio and I was like, how am I going to present this? So like there was all kinds of things on the internet. Like, you know, you just stand up and you start presenting your portfolio. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. (laughs) Uh, So they started asking me the questions of the interview. And then I kind of incorporated my portfolio. And once they started looking at it, they started passing it around the room and everybody was just like, Oh, wow, this is great. You know? So what a portfolio really is, it's just taking your resume and kind of making it into a visual. So I took my entire resume and turned it into like a visual portfolio that I took in a binder to my interview with me. And um, I left the interview. And by the time I got to my car, I had an email that said, you know, I had the job. (laughs) Wow. So, um, and, you know, I got really close with my manager who hired me and I kind of asked her just so I could have like a little bit of history if I ever talk about this story again. And she had told me, I said, you know, what was it that made me stand out as a candidate when I was interviewing with you? And she was like, you know, you came in, you had the confidence, you had um, the eagerness to get into the field, to want to you know, go really far. She goes, I can see you going really far with your career. And um, she said, you know, the portfolio showed that you had organizational skills, you knew how to use the computer. um, Because like, I didn't have any medical coding experience. Or healthcare experience, right? No, nothing. Yeah, no healthcare experience. Um, So my prior background, like I said, was just, you know, like the factory working. And I did work... um, it was 
uh, taking care of the elderly a little bit. I only lasted there for like maybe four months because I kind of seen that I wasn't the type for direct patient care. So I kind of wanted to be indirect patient care. Um, so that's the only health care I kind of had, which was maybe like four months. So, so yeah, so I didn't have any medical that like background at all. Um, but you know, I took what I had, which was a lot of, I had the ability to research, I had organizational skills, and I kind of just presented that, you know, because I was proud of what I did have, and I could incorporate that into medical coding. <laughs> what, so, what, um, what does a visual look like for, because I know there are many watching who are coming from all sorts of ba backgrounds, um, and for a factory worker, um, mm -hmm. how, how do you present that in a portfolio? What kind of things did you show, Megan? Um, well, so I just took my, I'll just focus on like my experience. So I took my work experience and there was this slide in PowerPoint where you could like uh, outline your places of work. So I took and put the date and then I put the name of the company that I was at. And then um, trying to get rid of a lot of the words because, you know, portfolio should be, you should look at it, understand it and go to the next page. So I put the date the company name and then I got a picture offline and put it into the little bubble um I mean I can send you a snippet after this if you can incorporate that somewhere of like yeah. the experience slide that I have <laughs> okay all right but yeah um so I just kind of took my entire resume and tried to figure out how do I make this visual so I'm an artsy person so I have that going for me <laughs> I think that's how I got into this educational role. <laughs> so yeah, um, but well, yeah, that's kind of what I did. Tell me about your resume because uh, and your, your application because you've you've talked about setting yourself apart in the interview, but you must you may have done something unique on your applications or resume um, for you to even get that call to go in for that pre-assessment test. Did you, do you feel like you did anything unique or set yourself apart in that regard, Megan? Um, yeah. So, uh, I did learn, which I didn't know this before, um, but my boyfriend, he's my fiance now, he had told me, he goes, you know, they have these computers that go through and they analyze your application and your resume and, you know, they'll throw it out if you don't have those specific keywords. So, I actually dissected the um, job post and I started putting keywords in there. So like a lot of the keywords are just, you know, like CPC, CPT, ICD-10 CM. You can put all of those keywords in your skills area because you do have those skills from coding school. And uh, Career Step actually gave us a sample resume. So I incorporated some of the keywords from what I learned in school and I put that into my education session or education section. And um, so, yeah, so I, every job post is different. So you want to read it entirely and just pick out the keywords that you start to see a lot within the job post and then put that into your resume and it should bypass, you know, the computer when it goes through and analyzes your resume. Okay. Um, but I will say you don't want to put stuff on your resume that you aren't familiar with. So don't just put that on there because it's showing up a bunch on the job post. <laughs> um, yeah. So make sure it's tailored to what you do know. I will say that. that I, I love that because I think um, many may be sending out resumes. Just They have their one resume and just sending out to every sending the same one out to many different places mm -hmm. without maybe customizing it to what they are looking for. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay. yeah. You would want to customize it. Um, Cause you know, every company is creating their own job post. It's kind of the same, but not really. And you do want to, you know, dissect the job post to make sure that you're a good fit for that position as well. Um, so yeah. yes. Yes. All right. Well, so you, you get this job as a coder, they put their um, faith in you and it works out mm -hmm. uh, great. It sounds like. So um, how long were you in that first role for Megan? Um, I was in that role for about a year and maybe four months. 
And then I started getting intrigued by interventional radiology. So interventional radiology is a subspecialty of diagnostic radiology. And we only had one interventional radiology coder at the time. So, you know, there was only one position, but I was still intrigued to learn that skill because I knew it was a step up from where I was at. And, you know, I'm a, the type of person that wants to just keep continuously growing over my entire life. So um, I took it upon myself to self-study a um, interventional radiology coding course. So uh, Stacy Buck, um, some people might know her. She uh, created the interventional radiology book and she has a course also, but I took and bought her book and I self-studied it, which was not really the norm that most people do. Like they really want to just get the book and self-study it. A lot of people would go through her course to learn how to do interventional radiology coding. So I didn't have the money at the time, which is why I didn't do the course. But I was like, you know, this is where I'm at. And this is what I can do to get to my goal. So that's what I did. And it took me about five months to get through her book. And I'm telling you, her book is about like maybe this thick. <laughs> so um, I was studying every day when I got off of work. And um, I had my son here. When I got off of work, uh, he's running through the house and making a bunch of noise. And I'm over here trying to focus. And I used to be the type of person that needed complete silence when I was studying something. But, you know, being a mom, eventually you get that out of your head and you just, do what you could do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I did, um, I self-studied interventional radiology for about five months. And then I sat for the CIRCC through AATC. And I believe it was August 2021. Yeah. And I passed first time. <laughs> nice. So, and let me tell you, that is a hard exam. Every single question is like, paragraphs of words really? <laughs> and so <laughs> it isn't just like you know a couple of sentences and you pick out um your choice kind of like the cpc this is like paragraphs you have to read and answer questions um so yeah so that was 2021 and then uh, so i got certified interventional radiology um, our coder who was doing interventional radiology she actually took another position, which opened that position for me. And I applied for that one. And I got into interventional radiology coding at my local hospital. Um, but you know, at the time, this was all during COVID. So we were all working from home. <laughs> um, and you know, mentioning that uh, in October 2019, I had only worked in the office for about four months, and they sent us home. And I've been working from home since then. <laughs> wow. So I kind of got in there at the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how has the career been for you? Is it what you thought it would be? Um, are you, I mean, I guess you, you love it, enjoy it. Do you enjoy the different possibilities that you can, different paths that you can take? Yeah, so um, I love coding. Like I love medical coding and um, I'm kind of moving more towards like education now. So not more so like production coding, but I do love the possibility. Like we have the possibility to go as far as we want to, you know, I mean, everybody has their own path and you could take it as far as you want to. And, you know, I've kind of hit the gas pedal over the last uh, four years. <laughs> So I'm kind of, I'm taking a step back a little bit and um, focusing more on like me and then, you know, my, I still have goals in medical coding and, but I'm still focusing on me because like in the four years, I kind of didn't really focus on me too much. So now I'm kind of trying to find that balance because I feel like I'm at a good place right now, but I do want to take my career to the next step as far as education. So I did apply for the uh, teacher assistant through AAPC. So I am waiting to hear back from that. That's something I want to do uh, part-time with my current job. And uh, I might do the instructor exam, but I have to wait till I get to my five-year mark for that. Okay. Um, and eventually, you know, and this is way down the line, but I kind of do want to branch out on my own and start. Uh, helping the coders that are coming up 
uh, as far as like CPC. And then I do want to get a little bit, uh, I want to start teaching the interventional radiology uh, because that's like a hot topic right now. You know, they need interventional radiology coders because that is um, a specialty and we need coders for that. So, so you have two certifications now? Um, well, I just got my CD EEO. It was September 2022. Okay. So that was my last one. <laughs> so right. I got three. I got my CPC, I got my CIRCC, and then I have my CDEO. Okay. So it was and like, it was like 2019, got my CPC, and then I waited an entire year. 2021, I got my CERC, and then 2022, I got my CDEO, and now I'm kind of taking a break from certification. Yeah. Well, <laughs> four, four years in the industry, and mm -hmm. you, you basically earned nearly one new certification a, a year. Yeah. So that that's a lot. You've been you've been working hard. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm curious, Megan. Has medical coding been able to provide and give your family what you had hoped? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. So I am at a good. Well, I'm salary now since I've taken on this educational role, but I am where I expected to be at. Um. And I think obtaining my specialty certification, in, like my cert really put me at a good place um, as far as my income goes. And, you know, I still see areas where my income can improve. But since I work from home, when I actually sit down and think about it, I save a lot of money uh, because my job, well, each of my jobs, my first job at my local hospital, and then my current job, they are very flexible um, with my schedule. So I don't have to put my son in daycare because I have a schedule where I could get up early enough and go to work and then get off of work and go get him. And then I have the afternoon off of work. So um, I save money from daycare and I work from home. So I save time. I don't have to drive into the office. And um, My son, he's actually had some uh, field trips recently and my job has been very flexible with that. So I've been able to take the day off and then make up that time during the week. Uh, so I don't have to actually use any PTO, but I could if I wanted to. So that's a little bit of flexibility. I try not to use my PTO too much because, you know, we do have a lot of work we have to get done. So I just like to make that time up when I can. Yes. But yeah, but yeah, um, you know, I... I'm making more than I could have made just with a high school diploma. <laughs> do you do you feel like your additional certifications helped you um, earn more? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, beyond your C, your CDEO and CIRCC. Yep, and you know I think the certifications actually put me in a place to say, hey, you know, I know my stuff because all throughout my career so far, I've kind of been looked upon as like a person new and upcoming. So even in my position now, I would say that it's not normal for a person with only maybe four years of coding experience to be in this position. But I have set myself up to be an expert in diagnostic and interventional radiology coding. So um, and my certifications, they are an example of my knowledge in the field. Okay, that that is so awesome. And it's great to hear. I mean, you did it. And I'm sure yes. you had a lot of those nerves that um, new students and newly certified members have um, trying mm -hmm. to find that first job and even passing the exam. Uh, but Megan, uh, you know that Starting Points is about um, inspiring those new coders who um, are searching for that first position. What final words would you give them? How would you um, help inspire them? I would just say, you know, go through your course. And a lot of students I see are trying to memorize, like, different questions and answers. And when I was coming up into coding, I'm not a person of memorization at all. So I like the applied knowledge. So I feel if you know how to use your ICD-10 CM book, like the index, and get to those 
you need or you can get to those diseases like you could index the diseases you will be fine on the cpc um i'll say when i went into the cpc exam i really didn't know how to use my cpt book like i didn't know how to use the index of the cpt book and i still don't know how to use that today but when you get into the field you're not indexing in the cpt book you have specific codes that are for your specialty so when you go to take the CPC exam, um, the CPT codes, you know, they're provided. And once you read everything, you'll be able to get to the answer. Um, so I say, you know, focus on your ICD-10-CM book and learn how to use that index. Don't try to memorize uh, questions and answers because uh, you want to set yourself up not just to pass the CPC exam, but to go into that interview and let the interviewers know that you know what you're doing. So I would say take a more applied knowledge approach and not so much a memorization approach. Awesome. Awesome. Megan, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. And we will need to reconnect with you down the road and see where your career continues to um, evolve. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks, Megan. All right. Bye-bye.